teaching and explanation. You know, somebody said to me, Dr. Bermuda, you know so many scriptures. How do you memorize? I do not memorize scriptures. I don't ever sit to memorize scriptures. But because I read them all the time, I read them all the time, so I get used to them that I know them. I don't just memorize, I know the scriptures. So it's easy for me to just pull them out and say them because I'm used to them. Are you following? So scriptures are profitable. That is the profitability of scripture can only be garnered, number one, when they are taught and explained. So scriptures, therefore, must be taught and scriptures must be explained. Now, when scriptures are taught and explained, they will bring you the second profit, which is reproof. The word reproof is not English. The Bible is not an English material. The Bible has its own language. So, they are profitable for reproof. The word reproof is the same word used in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence. The word evidence is the same word for reproof. So, scriptures will profit you when they are taught and explained. And when they are taught and explained, they will bring you to a place of persuasion, a place of conviction. Teaching and explanation will produce conviction and persuasion. Conviction and persuasion on what? Conviction and persuasion on the subject of the scriptures. Salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Persuasion on salvation. You'll be fully persuaded on salvation. Where you're not confused. Where you're not beaten about the bush. Where you're not in doubt or in fear. Where your heart has come to a place of rest. A place of assurance. Why? Because the scriptures have been explained. The scriptures have been taught. You have seen it. You're persuaded. Now, when the scriptures are taught and you're persuaded and you're convinced, it will produce the taught prophet, which is correction. You cannot correct yourself until you are convinced about something that you didn't believe in. It is when you are convinced about something you didn't believe in that you correct yourself. So that is why the scriptures must be explained to bring you to a place of conviction that will bring you to a place of correction where you correct yourself. Am I communicating at all? For example, many years ago I was taught that heaven is at last. And so we kept working hard to make heaven at last. We kept praying and fasting to make heaven at last. We sang songs like when you come to collect your people, remember me, O oh Lord. And we will clap and be sweating. Because we want him to remember us. We, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion is far. You can't march there. But we were taught and we believed it. I preached it. And I preached it with all my life. I preached it with everything I have. My prayer for you is that after all this, you will make it to heaven. We, we taught it. We preached it because that's what we were convinced about. Even though we didn't see it in the Bible, but we trusted the men of God that talked to us. They preached with tears in their eyes. They sweated their lives out. There's no reason why we couldn't trust them. Even though they couldn't show us substantially from scripture. We bought it from them hook, line, and sinker. And we preached it with all our lives. Until some of us began to check the book. And we discover what is in the book is not what we were told. So what begins to happen? Correction. We discover that heaven is not at last. Heaven is at first. The moment you are born again, the first place you arrive at is heaven. 
Oh yes, that's where you begin from. The journey begins from heaven. Oh, nanko sekele debai. Glory to God. Where are the citizens of heaven here? Now, what brings that is correction, which comes out of persuasion, which comes out of teaching and explanation. I'm teaching good tonight. Brother Paul will say, our citizenship is in heaven. Oh, glory to God. Brother Paul will say, he has raised us up together. He has quickened us together. He had made us sit together in heaven right now. It's not heaven at last. It's not heaven someday. I'm going higher. Yes, I am. I am going higher someday. No, but we are not going anywhere. We are not going everywhere, anywhere. I'm traveling, traveling, traveling home. I'm traveling, traveling home. We are not traveling anywhere. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> one of my sons in Germany said a preacher came to Europe and said to them there's one Dr. Damina in Nigeria who says people are not going to go to heaven don't listen to him <laughs> he's making me more popular because those who didn't know me before will google me to find out why I am saying that are we in the building but it takes teaching and explanation to bring you to that understanding and i'm not worried that many people are angry with us it is because they too have been deceived they have been fooled they have been fooled like i was fooled too i was also deceived i believed those jargons till i began to check the bible then i discovered no this is not what the bible is saying this is not what is in the bible now it's either you're going to agree with the bible or you're going to resist the bible it's one of the two either you will agree with the word of god or you will resist it it's as easy as that because some people are ready to fight the bible to hold on to their pet beliefs to hold on to what their pet beliefs see that i heard somebody was calling my attention to some 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 stuff some preachers in nigeria are saying that me i say i'm preaching the gospel of salvation that salvation is introductory level that after salvation which is kindergarten class there is what is called the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom salvation is introduction after salvation then you now enter the gospel of the kingdom after gospel of the kingdom there's a higher one the gospel of dominion <laughs> that salvation is introduction <laughs> salvation is what <laughs> first peter 1 10 we will come back here first peter chapter 1 verse number 10 are you getting blessed tonight first peter chapter 1 verse number 10 of which salvation of which what salvation the prophets have and all the prophets jeremiah ezekiel isaiah all of them were inquiring about salvation and somebody say it is introductory level <laughs> why did jesus come to earth she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name jesus he shall what save so that means the entire mission of jesus from start to finish his word salvation how can you call that introductory level he came to save his people from their sin period so I'm saying, but jesus said go and preach that the kingdom of god is at hand he was speaking to jewish people he's not talking to you it was specifically to the jews because the jews were still waiting for the messiah so he said go and tell them 
the kingdom is at hand means is bible language the kingdom has arrived what he's saying is i am here i am the kingdom i have arrived but some of them didn't believe so they started looking to the sky they were looking for the day the kingdom will come jesus said to them the kingdom does not come by observation the kingdom is among you are we teaching here so what is the kingdom message the kingdom message is the announcement of the arrival of christ what did christ come for he came for salvation so the kingdom is the announcement of the salvation plan of God. How do you call salvation introductory? The entire writings of brother Paul, the entire New Testament is salvation. Everything Paul wrote from the book of Romans, Romans begins with righteousness. Righteousness is part of salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto what? Salvation. Daring inside salvation is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So righteousness is what salvation brought. They are the contents of salvation. They are what? The contents of salvation. Righteousness, sanctification, justification. Um, eh, eh. A purification, a forgiveness of sins, sonship, daughtership. <laughs> Glory to God. All of them are part of salvation. What is their umbrella? Salvation. So how can you call salvation introduction? That is the cocoa of the gospel. That's the heart of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto what? So the entire spectrum, the entire depths, the entire, entire content of God's power is unto what? Salvation. So all of God's power is to make what happen? Salvation. How can you call that introduction? That means outside salvation, we can't see the power of God anywhere. power of God is on to. That is the destination of God's power is where? Salvation. So once the power of God arrived at salvation, it has arrived. That means outside salvation, you cannot find the power of God anywhere else. Which means the power of God is not in destruction. Because you can't have salvation and have destruction. So wherever you see destruction, is not God. Anywhere you see destruction, it cannot be God. Because God only saves. The power of God is unto salvation. Not unto destruction. Unto salvation. I'm teaching good tonight. The power of God is unto salvation. To everyone that believes. To the Jews and then to the Gentiles. The power of God. The power of God is not in thunder. The power of God is not in lightning. The power of God is not in the ground opening and swallowing people. The power of God is not in death. The power of God is in life. I'm preaching good tonight. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Pay attention. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 14. I'm just greeting you people. It's tomorrow we shall open Bible. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 14. Can we all read together like a mass choir? I like the way all of you are looking in this in this conference. You are beginning to make me feel at home. Let's go. Let's go. Want to go? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also like himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy God. That through death he might destroy God. No, I thought he might destroy God who had the power of death. Wait. I thought he might destroy God, G O D, who had the power of death. Eh? I thought his God that has been killing people. Eh? 
I thought God is the killer. Okay, let's read it again. Let's read it again. I want to go. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is God. Who has been the killer? Who was the killer? Who is the killer? Are we teaching here? Kamanakata. Through the vehicle of death. Hayada. Can I open something? Genesis chapter 2. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse number 16. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat next verse let's read the next verse together everybody verse 17 one to go but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely This is not causative. This is informative. God is not causing man to die. God is informing man of what has the potential to kill because he's a loving father warning his child ahead of time. The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. It's like I tell my child, if you put your hand in fire, fire will burn you. And my child goes to put the hand in the fire. And the fire burns the child. Am I the one that burned the child? Who burnt the child? The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Informative. Not causative. Informative. Now look at me everybody. The death here is not Japa or Kweme. The death here is not Kweme. Eh? Because Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. Put it up for me. Genesis chapter 3 verse number 9. Glory to God. Genesis 3 9. Glory to God. That's right. Can we all read together? Everybody want to go. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Next verse. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Question, has he died here? In verse 10, has Adam died? He has died. But he's talking. He has died and is hiding. So, which means the death there was not Beme. The death there was separation. The day you eat of it, you shall be separated from life. Now, I know the question you're going to ask is Did Adam have life? Well, what Adam had cannot be called life. Adam existed. He was in existence. Because Adam was not created with eternal life. Adam was not created with eternal life. If Adam had eternal life, he wouldn't have died. Because once you have eternal life, you don't die. But Adam died. Which means Adam didn't have eternal life. So what did Adam have? He had human life. Just like animal life or plant life that has no second-hand value. So Adam had human life. Adam could exist. 
so he can make a choice his choice will determine whether he has eternal life or he has death and adam made the choice for death and he died but he was moving which means the death we are talking about here is not death is separation from god separation from god that's what brother paul was talking about when he wrote to the church in Colossae, in colossians chapter 4 verse 17 come with me to colossians chapter 4 verse 17 glory to god colossians chapter 4 verse numbers no not colossians 4 17 give me colossians chapter 2 <clears throat> glory to god and this i say this i testify that you has did i say Col ephesians 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 chapter 4 verse 17 <clears throat> this i say therefore and testify in the lord that you henceforth walk not as other gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind next verse now pay attention next verse having the understanding darkened so they are being alienated separated from the life of god eh? through what in whom the god of this world has what blinded so the ignorance is spiritual ignorance and when that ignorance take hold of a man the man is separated alienated disconnected from the life of god from the life of god adam was separated from god where he would have received life now he was united with death separated from god united with satan united with death because he made the choice united with death adam died and from adam death began to reign death began to reign romans chapter romans chapter 5 verse number 14 are you getting blessed romans chapter 5 verse 14 nevertheless death reigned from adam to moses from adam to moses was the regime the reign of death like right now we're under the reign of buhari reign means rulership man was under the rulership of death because man made the choice for death so death ruled over man the day you eat you shall die and because man was under the reign of death listen carefully satan now was hiding in the circumstances of man since man was ignorant of satan and killing people physically because the reign was the reign of death the regime of death man was under that reign of death so death ruled over mankind men became victims of death because they also followed suit in adam's shoes to make the choice that adam made but there were people that never made adam's choice there are people that never made adam's choice but even though they never made adam's choice they didn't have life so they too were under the reign of death people like moses people like abraham people like abel they never made the choice of adam they made the choice to believe the gospel but the gospel couldn't give them life but the gospel gave them a promise of life which will only be actualized upon the resurrection i'm teaching good so through the old testament nobody had the life of god but they believed the gospel and they had a promissory note that one day you will have that life but now you can't have that life that's why when jesus came he now said i am come that you may have so before jesus came nobody could have life the coming of jesus is the coming of life glory to god glory to god that's what the bible says he that has the son has life 
he that has believed the gospel has passed from death to life it's called immortality every born again child of god has immortality on the inside you cannot die somebody shout i cannot die say it again that's the gospel the gospel is the gospel of life and immortality until immortality is preached the gospel is not preached immortality means deathless you cannot die because the life of god reigns oh eternal life that's what romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 said there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are where in christ for the law of the spirit of life where in christ has set me what free from the law of sin and death i'm free i'm free from death i'm free from sin i'm free from judgment i have eternal life i thought somebody would shout glory just sit down for a minute let me look for somewhere to close the service tomorrow morning tomorrow evening what what was ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 glory to god question who had the power of death the devil ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and you hath he quickened and you hath he quickened the word quickened means you hath he made alive you hath he quickened who were what dead where in trespasses and sins look at the next verse ah wherein in time past you walked so you were dead but you were walking so you know that that death is not me okay that death is separation which is worse than physical death separated from god you're just floating. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh where? In the children of disobedience. What kind of disobedience? Disobedience to the gospel. Next verse. Among all, whom also we all, we all had our conversation in time past where in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and we are by nature the children of wrath eh? even as others next verse you will like this one let's go verse for everybody want to go but god who is rich in mercy go back go back go back for his great love wherewith he will love us he will love us he had loved us he has already loved you you can do nothing to change his mind wherewith he loved us oh glory to God but God who is rich not in dollars he's not rich in euro he's rich in mercy the riches of christ are intangibles the riches of christ are not things you can hold car is not one of them house is not one of them money is not one of them no aircrafts are not part of the riches of christ the riches of Christ are those things that unbelievers cannot access. You can only access the riches of Christ in Christ. So God is rich. Then he explains to you in what area he is rich. Rich where? In mercy. For his great love. Wherewith he loved us. Oh, Shakaya next verse even 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 when we were dead we are in sins and had quickened so you were not quickened because you repented somebody else said dr damina's message is salvation introductory class 
There's a bigger message. The message of repentance. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> One day, ignorance will undress you in public. He said, the message of repentance. The church need to repent. Because he that does not repent shall perish. Dr. Damina's message is too sweet. It does not make people cry. The gospel is good news. God made him sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout glory. That's the gospel. Now sit, sit, sit. Let me close this service. Repentance. How many of you know that Jesus never sent them to preach repentance to the Gentiles? Repentance was preached to the Jews. To the Jews. He said, go not to those that are not of the house of Israel. So when you go to the house of Israel, tell them to repent for the kingdom of God. To repent for the kingdom has arrived. That is change your mind. Stop expecting God, heaven, the Messiah. Change your mind. The Messiah is here. Change your mind and accept the Messiah. So repentance is not to the Gentiles. Repentance is to the Jews. We Gentiles, we didn't know about any Messiah. So the gospel that was brought to the Gentile was belief. Believe. Believe. We don't have anything to repent of. All we know is idols. So our own is just to believe. But Jews knew that there was a God. And they were expecting that God. And the way Jesus came was disappointing. In their mind, God cannot come like that. In their mind, God should just appear in the sky with lightning and fear, fear, fear. I'm saying, I am the Lord. <laughs> and if you do like this, your neck will just bend her. I say, in case you don't know, I am the Lord. Remain like that for three years. Say, the Lord is punishing him. <laughs> but here is God coming in the womb of a virgin whose husband we cannot establish. She's pregnant and we can't tell who pregnanted her. It's like he's a bastard though. Then they want to give birth to him. Nowhere to accommodate him. It's like from the mother's side, bad luck is following him. So they born him inside manger. Manger where cow used to drink water. Then to make matters what? He grew up inside carpentry workshop. To make matters more worse, he was ugly. He was not a fine boy. How can he be God? How can he be God? They expected an emperor. They expected a terrorist. They expected a killer. They expected a bulldozer. They expected that when God arrives and you do, boom, God will just say, your mouth disappear. <laughs> say, Obana God, Obana God. If you just don't believe the gospel and his fear, your leg will just vanish. You'll be carrying one leg and be going. <laughs> if I be a man of God. But here is God coming in a manger. Very disappointing. And at this time when he was born, Israel were under oppression. Under the rulership of Caesar. Under the rulership of Herod, terrorists. And Israel wanted a deliverer to free them. And then the deliverer that came to free them. Is coming through a manger in the house of a carpenter. What kind of God is this? That's why Jewish people cannot believe in Jesus. How can he be God? That's why they have to repent, they have to change their mind. And that's why we have to believe. I'm teaching good tonight. That's why till today the Jews can't accept. That's why even our religious institutions can't believe that Jesus is God. Jesus looks like a weak God. In their mind, they say, God, that is a killer. 
you tell life from the door of the church before you enter. Bam, you come They drag you to burial ground. You are inside church, you think one bad thing. Fear! Your ears disappear, your eyes vanish. You go home without eyes and ear. God, who can try God? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Yes. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Nobody. Ah, Sabi the song here. Glory, glory. Somebody shout, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Let me close this service. <laughs> so, but, but this is God. He comes very gentle. Ha, how can he be God? They slap him. He say, forgive them. Ha. You call this one God? They couldn't take it. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness but unto us that are saved is the power of god glory to god glory to god that's the gospel we preach the son of man came not to be ministered to but to minister and give his life a ransom for many let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he is equal with God, taught it not robbery to be in equality with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, at the mention of that name. Uh, the mention of that name <laughs> is not true, it's a lie. It's not at the mention of the name, it's at the name. It's different. Not at the mention, at the name. And the name is not the label J E S U S. J E S U S is the label. Anybody can have the label. Footballers today are called Jesus. It's not at the label. It's at the name. What is a name? A name is authority. A name represents office. A name represents influence. At the office. At the authority of Jesus. Not at label. Not at the label. the name the office and I have news for you when you got born again you were born into his office you are born into his office you are in his name I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named you are in the name so at the name not at the mention at the appearance of the name Every knee must bow. That is when you show up, demons flee. You don't have to say in Jesus' name. Just your appearance. You are in the name. <laughs> Glory to God. Satan is the author of death. But Jesus by death. See, Satan is so weak that Jesus did not kill him while alive. You didn't hear that. <laughs> Satan is so insignificant. He's a non-entity. He's an idiotist. That Jesus didn't kill him while alive. Because it would be too much. It's like using a nuclear weapon to kill a fly. So Jesus died as a dead man. He trapped death. 
he trapped Satan as a dead man and destroyed him as a dead man. Then rose. He rose. Then he put Satan under your feet. He didn't carry Satan with him because Satan is not for him. He put him under. Satan is under your instruction. You're the one that have the final say. He put him under your feet. I have news for you. Death has been destroyed. God is not the author of death. He's the author of life. He's not the author of darkness. He's the author of light. He's not the author of sin. He's the author of righteousness. There is no evil in God. He's totally good. He's altogether lovely. Every part of God you touch is goodness that comes out. Anywhere he turns to is goodness that comes out. God is good. God is good. That's our father. He's a good God. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Are you blessed tonight? Get on your feet, that's all I got for you tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lift your right hand, Father. Thank you for this meeting tonight. Thank you for this weekend. We're here just basking in the euphoria of your world. So revelation knowledge grows and grows and grows. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Sickness, disease, terminated. Your people built up, equipped, edified. And we decree that the glory of God is made manifest among us, within us, and through us. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. I'm going to take up your offering for another two minutes. Then I will answer a few questions before I let you go tonight. Is that beautiful? Yeah. Grab a good offering. Let's give in faith. We give intentionally. We give deliberately. We give with joy. Every time we give, we have mission on our mind. We are a mission-minded people. We are committed to God and we are committed to the cause of Christ on the earth. So our resources, we don't keep away from God. We give to God generously because it's of his fullness that we all have received. Much more when we have a conference like this, it costs our campus in, you know, money to organize meetings like this. So we give joyfully so that the bills are paid and everything is taken care of and we have more money to do more for the kingdom. I didn't hear a good amen. You know, this is not my last time of coming to Enugu. This is just my beginning. We will come and come and come and come. We will go to Onicha. We will go to Asaba. We will go to Owere said, Owere said they prayed hard. That's why I came through Owere. That I touch Owere first before I got to Enugu. The effectual fervent prayer. <laughs> See the way people are happy. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank God for grace. Are you ready? Lift up your offerings, Father. We give in faith. We give with joy. Our offerings are an expression of our honor and gratitude and our response to what you have done. So we rejoice that our offerings before your sweet smell tonight is several well pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. The baskets are here. You just walk forward. Don't wait for the record. Drop your offerings. Give the single few.
I need you, I pray for you, because you share the meeting tonight, so that people that follow you will know we're having it at real time. Encourage people to be here tomorrow. Let there be ball in this place. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm excited, I tell you. I'm excited. Yeah, I have been telling Pastor Oji that I'm coming to Enugu, I'm coming to Enugu. I'm here today in flesh and blood. <laughs> Glory! Any question from anybody? Any questions? Questions? I want to ask us if any. If there's none, we don't have to create. Okay, there's one question. Anybody else? There's two. Anybody else? There's three. Anybody else? Four. Anybody else? Five. All right. Can you all come? Come forward. Let's answer them sharp, sharp. And then tomorrow morning we'll repeat. Tomorrow evening we'll repeat and answer questions. If you know people in Enugu who are very, very, very confused about the things I teach, encourage them to be here tomorrow. What time tomorrow morning? 9 a.m. I'm teaching full blast, full throttle. And then tomorrow evening we're back at 5.30. God punish the devil. Praise God. All right, let's go. Questions? Uh, man of God, I'm blessed. Praise God. Uh, I'm Barrister Pastor Celestine Chikozie Unodi. Praise I'm from Anisha area. All right. Uh, my question has to do with that Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. All scripture is. Okay. That singular verb, even singular, using singular for scripture, with the word all. So I want to understand why that singular. That's my question. Well, again, you know, in Bible interpretation, the English that was used was the English as at the time the translation took place. And we all know that language keeps progressing. All right? So because of the progression of language, when you want to interpret that today, you don't rely on King James. You go to the Greek and Hebrew. And from there, you can get the original flavor with which it was communicated. And you can identify why some of those syntax situations are found in the interpretation. That's all. It's language. It's language. Bless you. Yeah. Good evening, Papa. Bless you. I am Naman Chinaman. Uh, my question goes as like this. Are angels capable of committing evil? Yes, they are. That's why Satan fell. From Lucifer, he became Satan. Okay. That's why angels fell and became demons. Because God didn't make them robots. He gave them the freedom to also choose. That's why we shall judge the angels. Because of the wrong choices some of them will make. So angels have free will too? Yep. Okay. Thank do. you. Thank you, sir. You know, God does not want to force people anything. All the things God created, he gave them free will. In fact, almost all, except for non-living things. Even animals. Yeah, they have a will. It's just that when they die, that's the end. It's like goat. When you want to drag a goat, don't you see the goat will do? It doesn't want to come. Because they have a will. You can say yes and no. Clear? Bless you. Thank you, sir. Bless you. You are a blessing to me Thank in, you. in particular. Thank My you. name is uh, Samson Oko. I'm from uh, Nsuka Campus. All right. So uh, Nsuka Campus is also here. <laughs> I can see. I can see. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I didn't see all of you in Suka. Praise yes, God. Yes. So I want to ask, sir, the saints that are dead now, where are they? They are with Christ. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Wow. Now, hold on. <laughs> hold on. For more explanation. They don't travel. They don't travel. When people die, they drop mortality and assume full immortality in Christ. Before they die, they are in Christ. When they die, they are still in Christ. So they didn't go anywhere. It's only that this body that relates with mortality is dropped. So they can't relate with us again. Because the suit that enables them to function on earth is demobilized. So they are still where they are in Christ. Where you are in Christ. Please, um, uh, Brother Paul talks about uh, uh, the saints being raised and changed. Immortal. 
Yeah. Immortality will swallow mortality. Yeah. Corruption will swallow immortality. Corrupt, incorruption. Okay. We shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and we will be with the Lord forever. Okay. Those who die, died, who are saints, are they, with the Lord be, right now. Yes, they are with the Lord. But they, but are they not will changed. be raised. Okay. They are not changed yet. Yes, yes. But yes. They, are, they are immortal. Okay. Because it's a part of you that is immortal right now. That's your spirit. It's your body that is not mortal. I mean, immortal. Okay. Your body is mortal. That's why you drop it in death. Okay. which is what we call sleep for the believer okay. death for the unbeliever okay. on the resurrection day this body that you drop will become this the guarantee for you to wear the heavenly body that's what's called redemption okay. if you remember back in the days we used to have seven up mirinda pepsi and they used to do promo then they will tell you to keep drinking as many bottles of seven up as you can drink and when you open it, check the cup. Yeah. You will see a gift. So if you have a gift, keep the cup until the redemption day. Okay. Then on the day of redemption, you take that cup to seven up office. You give them the cup, they give you the gift. If you miss the cup, no gift. If somebody steal your cup, no gift. Your guarantee for that gift is a cup. Your guarantee to wear immortality is mortality. So this body will be raised, but upon it being raised, it will be changed. Brother Paul calls it a clot. The heavenly body is a clot you will wear, where you will function like Jesus, where you will walk through a wall without breaking it and without the wall stopping you. Because when eternity invades time, matter don't matter. So there will be no material limitation. Thank you, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. But where are we going to be? We'll be in Christ. We'll be with Jesus. You know, <laughs> people talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me tell you. Yes, Hold sir. on. Let me tell you. The problem is, listen carefully. The problem is our minds are messed up. You know why our minds are messed up? First of all, we're used to going to a place. Yeah. Lagos. Uyo. Ibadan. Enugu. Onicha. I'm going that's number one number two religion taught us that they are building in heaven that there's a place where construction is going on so that agrees with traveling to places you have to renew your mind and think in line with scripture first of all there's no building anywhere god is not building anything jesus said destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it up so the temple of god is the believer your body is the temple. So I am God's heaven. I am the dwelling place of God. God lives in me. And I live in him. So when we drop this body, we live in that reality called Christ. That's where we live. Fully. With full consciousness. Then we lose the consciousness of here. Because this body is what makes us conscious of here. When you drop it, you can't be conscious of fear. Let me explain a little more. You know about space travel. People who travel to outer space. Outer space is just here. Or it's not that far. It's just up here. Yet when you're going to outer space, doctors will prepare you for the journey for months. They will give you special diet. They will give you special treatment to prepare you for a new environment. Then you will wear a cloth called space suit. Because this body is earth suit. This body can only function on earth. It's earth suit. You will wear space suit. Because in outer space, there's no ground and there's no matter. You can actually be walking upside down for three days. Because it's a different environment. So if outer space, yeah, they have to prepare you to go and you have to wear a suit for it. Is it the immaterial world? So that's why you have a heavenly body. Heavenly body. That you will wear to be with Jesus forever. The word heaven. 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 The word heaven. Is the word euphoronious. It means immaterial. So heaven is not a physical place. It's an immaterial realm. Where when you drop this material body. 
you fully operate in that realm in Christ. Is it clear? There's a book, I, hold, I wrote a whole book on it. Heaven, the believer's reality now. I think it's about 300 pages or so. If you get it, all scriptures on heaven are well explained in that book. Bless you. Thank you. Next question. Good evening, man of God. Evening. My name is Chika Charity. Bless I you. I came from Onicha. Onicha, welcome. My question could be quite complicating, but I want to communicate it. I heard you say that immortality must be preached or else the gospel is not complete. That's right. In essence, does this imply that immortality has to take effect in full essence on earth? Mm -hmm. That's my first question. Should I continue with the other ones? Go ahead. All right. The second question I have is the scripture that says, He that is born of God cannot First John 3, commit nine. sin. First John 3, 9. But we see a whole number of percentage of believers in higher number. Sin. Sin. Yes. So I wish to understand why. Wh when they have the life yes. of God. Yes. So what sponsor sin? Such sin as a practice. Yes. Because sin as a nature is destroyed by Jesus. Yes. So sin as a practice is supposed to be an after aftermath yes. of sin as a nature. Yes. You see, you see some believers. Yes. Living sin. Yes. So what sponsors is since even this scripture says that like yes. he that is born cannot. Cannot cannot is actually cannot. Yes. So why do believers, some not all, yes, commit sin? Okay, so two are you still here? Yes, so let me Size has not finished. Let, okay, okay. Th that's two. Ask the last one. Okay. Um what brought about the physical death? By explanation and understanding, Genesis chapter one, sorry, chapter three, verse sixteen instruction is actually spiritual death. Yes. So, what brought about the physical death? Okay. And then, when, um, when we became believers, we, be, we received the seed of eternity, mm -hmm. of immortality. Mm -hmm. Why do we physically still die? Okay. So the questions are like this. The first one, please remember, so you can remind me. The first one is immortality full immortality will not happen on earth because of mortality if full immortality happens here you'll be useless to this earth because it means you no more have an earth suit so you can't function here then you have to go but to be here you need this god is full immortality but the poor calls him the immortality that dwelleth in unapproachable light which no eye has seen nor will ever see yet when he wanted to come to earth he came in with mortality because the only way you can function here is mortality so full immortality will take effect after this body is removed so death is a blessing then. i'm coming <laughs> i'm coming all right then second question why is it that believers who have the nature of god still see because there is memory before you got born again you, if you used to ride bicycle when you are born again you don't forget riding bicycle memory so you've been sinning since you were young you sin for 35 years of your life then now you're born again there's memory and the battle is that memory it is called the renewing of the mind so as your mind get renewed by the teaching of God's word, the appetite for sin dies. So it's progressive. The renewing of the mind. It comes by teaching. That's why we come to church. Teaching will be bringing the mirror of your identity before you to show you who you are. As you keep looking, it starts correcting the memory. And over time, you lose taste for sin. Is it clear? So that's what the Bible says. My little children, these things write out unto you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have. So God created room to accommodate the sin of believers. Because God knows that there's memory 
that the believer will have to grow out of. So that's First John 3, 9. is not talking about the act of sin. It's talking about the nature. You cannot sin because that's not your nature. So that means when a child of God sin, he is pretending to be what he is not. So that's why you bring the mirror to him, which is the teaching of God's word, to remind him who he is. Like the prodigal son is eating with pigs, then he remembers, my father's house is better than this. He arises and he loses taste to eat with pigs and he goes home. So when we teach people the word of God, it brings them to remembrance. But they must see themselves in the light of Christ. Third question. Why do believers physically die? Physical death took effect after the fall of Adam, who is the progenitor of the human race. In one man, all died. So Adam, who accepted to reject the gospel, introduced mortality into humanity. Are you following? Okay. So now when you believe the gospel, that mortality, that death that was introduced into human body, you do not escape it. That's why there is the resurrection of the dead provided in redemption, which is our blessed hope. Yes, it is. In. Yes, there's nobody that will live here forever. There's nobody. Everybody will have to die. Oh, brother Paul says we shall not all. Better. Brother Paul says we shall not all sleep. He didn't say we shall not all die. He said we shall not all sleep. Unbelievers die. Believers don't die. Believers sleep, and you don't sleep by force. You sleep by choice. Even your baby, if you're married, your baby doesn't sleep by force. Even if you force the baby, the baby will pretend. When you go out, the baby will stand up and, hey. if you're coming, mm -hmm. because sleep is not by force. Sleep is by choice. That's why no, no saint in the New Testament died by force. Jesus said, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. They didn't collect it. Stephen the same. Paul, they stoned him, stoned him, stoned him. He collapsed. They thought he has died. They left him. By the next day, he was teaching in the synagogue. When he was ready to go, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Now I am ready to be offered up. So, we sleep by choice, but unbelievers die by force. And when they die, they have died. We, when we sleep, we will wake up. And, we, and hold on, we shall not all sleep. Some will sleep, some will not. Some of us will be here when rapture will happen. <laughs> but you know what? Brother Paul said we shall not all sleep, but he slept. <laughs> Kenneth Hagin said, I will be alive when Jesus will come. He is sleeping. <laughs> so we shall not all sleep. Meaning everybody will not be out when Jesus will show up. There will still be people alive. But those of us that have slept, if he tarries, we will wake up with him. And we will be with him forever. Yes. Death is not a product of Satan. No, death is not a product of Satan. Death is a product of nature. Nature. It's not a product of Satan. But Satan kills. Do you understand? Okay. Death is a product of nature because man sinned. Wherefore, as by one man, not by Satan, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Okay, so sin and death walked hand in hand and they were permitted to take hold of man by man. So Satan now takes advantage of what man has created to kill people. Is it clear? That book again, the believers. Heaven's reality now has a lot on immortality and all of that. So you can get it. It will help you more. God bless you. Praise God. Next question. Okay. 
Okay. Good evening, sir. Evening. <laughs> my name is Carlo Princess B. All right. My question goes on a Christocentric meal, October 23rd. Okay. And you talk about the topic there says, your words express worry or fate. Or fate. Yep. Then I go to this, this phrase. He said, never be in a hurry to achieve achievement is not fulfillment. Never be in a hurry to make money. Many people have the call of God upon their lives, but they have lost it because of money. So it got me um, confused. Okay. I've wondered in it so many times. I've even asked people, but the, the answer has not cleared my, the, my... My question there is, many people have the call of God upon but, their lives, but, but they money. have lost it. Because of making money. You know, the call of God is ministry. The call of God is salvation. But within salvation is the call of God to ministry. There are two different things. You are saved. After you are saved, you serve the purpose of God. That's ministry. But some people get lost in money making that they don't have time to fulfill their ministry. That's what we are saying. Like brother Paul will say, Demas has forsaken the ministry because he's in love with this world, making money. There's nothing wrong with making money. But as you are making money, you must remember to create time to serve the purpose of God. Because when we leave this world, you will not be rewarded for making money. You will be rewarded for ministry. Yeah, but uh, Romans 11, 9, it says, for the gift of God and the coin of God are irrevocable. So, they are irrevocable. So why irrevocable doesn't mean you fulfill the ministry. The fact that you have the call of God doesn't mean you are working in it. It's one thing to be called. It's another thing to walk in it. So, in other words, someone can so that's use... why Paul will say, I have finished my course. There are people that have not even started their course. But the call is on their life. Is it clear? So, so someone can lose his body, right? He cannot lose it. But he can go without fulfilling it. You don't lose it. It's eternally yours. If you are a minister of the gospel today and tomorrow you abandon it. And you go and do politics and do politics and forget ministry and forget even Bible. And then one day you say, Father, I'm now ready. That call is still there. It will never leave you. But you can live a life that does not fulfill it. And there will be no reward for you when you see Jesus. Is it clear? Bless you. All right. Thank you, sir, for yes. the exposition. Bless you. Please, um, I have this question. Okay. You said that devil is a killer. Yes. And by implication, God is not a killer. Never. Okay. Um, there's, there's a portion of the scripture where I read. Yes. And God addressed himself yes. as a killer. I kill it and make it alive. Yes. So, yeah. so how do you balance it? No, there's no balance. It's yeah. balanced. It's balanced. Okay. So, now, what is there a different is, rendition? How do we explain it? Is there a different rendition? No, what you're asking me is how do we explain that he, verse? Yes. In the light of God doesn't kill. Yes. Abi? Because so there are various cases. I'm coming. So when you read that verse very well, applying the rule of pretext and post-text, it's first somewhere, right? No, Deuteronomy. The, yes. So let's start from Deuteronomy. Read two verses before that and two verses after. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 32, 37 following. Okay. 32, 37. Go ahead. He, my emphasis is on 39. Okay, so, so start is, from 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay. He will say, where are their gods? The rock in which they sought refuge. Yes. Who ate the fat Next of their time. sacrifices. Yes. And drank the wine of their drink offering. Yes. Let them rise and help you and, and be, be your, your refuge. Point. Yes. 39. Yes. Now see that I, even I, am he. Yes. And there is no God beside me. Yes. I kill Yes. And I make a life. Yes. I wound. Yes. And I heal. Yes. Nor is there anyone yes. who can deliver from my hand. Yes. For 40. 40. For I raise my hand to heaven. Yes. And say, as I live forever. I live forever. So now this is how to explain it. Remember, Jesus said in Luke 24, 27. Put it up. Luke 24, 27. You must understand the Christology of scripture. I'm beginning at Moses, 
Moses includes Deuteronomy and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I kill it, I make it alive. Is God saying, I will kill my son and I will raise him up on the third day? Is the prophecy of Christ in Deuteronomy. And it was repeated by Anna in Samuel. I kill it and make it alive. I wound and I heal. He was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes you are healed. He's not talking of killing people. It's the prophecy of Christ carried in the scriptures. What about Earth that God killed? Who, who emitted on the ground? No, it's not God. In the Bible, when you see God or Lord, they were used for different things. Idols were called gods. Judges were called gods. Angels were called gods. Judges were called lords. So when you read and you see God, you need to look at the entire context to know who he is talking about. For example, Moses said God was looking for how to kill him. Exodus 4.24 And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. How can God, God, want to kill and is looking for how to kill? Are you understanding? So there were also assumptions. This is an assumption. Moses' assumption. In Genesis 18, Moses also wrote that God said, let me go down to Sodom and see whether they will obey God. If he's God, he should know whether they will obey or not. He doesn't have to come down to see. If he has to come down to see, then it means he doesn't have all knowledge. So again, in the Old Testament, there are assumptions that we clarify by explaining scriptures in the light of Christ. One more scripture to help you is 1 Peter 1.10. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets, Old Testament prophets, have inquired. So in their writing you will see inquiries and such. In their writing you will see such, searchings. You will see inquiries. You will see assumptions. That's why the scriptures must be rightly divided. But I recommend my series, The Misunderstood God. The Misunderstood God is a series that takes care of all the killings in the Old Testament and who is responsible. It's part one, two, three, four, five, six, about 200 and something hours explaining all the killings in the Old Testament. God bless you. <laughs> all right. Good evening, Papa. Glory. 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 My name is Asian Samuel. Okay. What really drew me to you, I was in Castina some time ago. It was about the issue of baptism. So okay. we're like, what rubbish is this? Why would you be saying we shouldn't be baptized? But what I want to ask you this evening is about communion. Because we know that the Bible says Jesus was the express image of God. Yes. So how would you say that we shouldn't, eat, we shouldn't eat communion because where I'm coming from before now we shouldn't we, eat bread and ribena yes yes sir yes sir where I'm coming from before now they used to well let me just mention it in winners we sprinkle we use they'll put this communion on bottle when your child is sick you put it on him and then and you just said we shouldn't be doing that and all that but Jesus said do this in remembrance of me and also the Lord's prayer no wait because wait do this in remembrance of me do you remember somebody that is dead or alive who do you remember the dead or the living the living sir is jesus dead or alive he's alive sir so why do you need to remember him so to help you tomorrow tomorrow i will take time to explain some of this but I have a book on the communion table. The communion table. 
is a book, a whole book. It will explain all those scriptures to you properly in the light of Christ. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Glory. Last question before we go. Good evening, sir. Evening. My name is Okoren Dubisi Mesoma Chuku. I wanted to ask you a question based on what our pastor said last week, Sunday. Okay. I want you to talk more on heaven and communion. Heaven and communion is six months of teaching. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow, tomorrow, I will talk more on heaven and I will talk on communion tomorrow. Okay? God bless you and thank you for asking. Let's clap for her as she goes. Are we blessed? Invite more people for tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, tomorrow evening. We'll try and see how much we can teach tomorrow and tomorrow evening and then Saturday, I mean Friday morning. Amen. Are you excited? Are you tired? Are you excited? 